Alyssa was studying psychology at the university in her city. On 11 February 2015, after leaving school, she went with a friend to a shopping mall across town. In the evening, after leaving her friend at the mall, she took a bus home. Alyssa usually knew the drivers of the buses she usually took on her way back from the mall. But this time, she saw the driver of the bus for the first time. The bus started moving. After a while, the other passengers on the bus started to get off at the stops. Alyssa was the last one left on the bus. Alyssa was getting worried when the driver, Dylan Brooks, changed his usual route and headed out of the city. Dylan Brooks pulled the bus to a deserted spot and stood up. Alyssa took out the pepper spray she carried in her purse to protect herself and sprayed Dylan in the face, but even the pepper spray couldn't stop him. They started to struggle. Alyssa scratched his face with her fingernails. Dylan, hurt, lost his temper and grabbed his knife, which was under the driver's seat in the car, and attacked again. He randomly stabbed Alyssa several times with the knife. Dylan then lost his temper. Alyssa succumbed to these blows and lost consciousness. Unable to achieve his goal of rape and enraged, Dylan continued to hit Alyssa until he killed her. Realizing his crime, Dylan hurried back to his own house. His father was sitting on the porch of their house. He told him what had happened and asked for help. Dylan and his father decided to dispose of the body together. They would burn the body to leave no clues. They took Alyssa Walker's body to the woods near the creek on the interstate highway. Wanting to remove all evidence, they decided to cut off her hands because Dylan had dug his fingernails into her face while Alyssa was resisting. They did not want to leave any evidence for DNA testing. Dylan and his father poured gasoline over the body's head and burned it by the creek. While all this atrocity was happening, her family did not hear from Alyssa and reported the situation to the police. From that moment on, the police started searching everywhere for Alyssa, who was missing. A few days later, Dylan and his father, believing that they had survived, were traveling by bus when they came across a police roadblock. Dylan panics when he sees the police car. When he arrives at the checkpoint, the police search the bus because of his suspicious behavior. The police inspect the inside of the bus and find traces of blood on the seat. A woman's hat is also found on the bus. Dylan is interrogated and confesses to the murder. The court sentences the killers to aggravated life imprisonment, Alyssa's father says in a statement after the trial. Aggravated life imprisonment is the most severe punishment in the justice system, but even this punishment will not be enough. So the murderers will live there, breathe there, take care of their needs there, take a bath, eat, sleep. Is this justice? Soon, a news comes from the prison. The killers were shot in prison. The one who shot Dylan is one of the prison guards. After the incident, the prison guard said, The murder of Alyssa Walker haunted my dreams. I have two little girls of my own. When I saw Dylan in front of me, my daughters came to my mind. I thought that such murderers have no right to live, and I shot Alyssa saying hello. He says, Do you think justice was served? 